the work that you're doing within the immigration community is something that you're very proud of and, yeah. and speak prominently around. Um, it certainly is, makes absolute sense for that alignment, we believe. It's a great story. Tell us about how that ultimately, though, is also fueling the business and how it serves the business as well as obviously the purpose. I will answer that question, but I think it's important to note that it wasn't automatic mm. and it wasn't easy. There were no other corporations that were really speaking on behalf of migrants mm. because the topic of immigration mm. can be a bit of a lightning rod, Completely. right? It can be controversial politically. Um, it can make feel, people feel very differently uh, about many different issues, whether it's jobs or religion or, you know, really just nationality. Mm. Uh, so I think in the beginning, to be honest, we were wondering if we could be bold enough, right. if we could be bold enough mm. to actually take it on. And what, what would happen to uh, the stock price? What would happen with our shareholders? Would we lose shareholders? Would the media take this as positive or would the media right. use this against us? There was a lot of risk. I mean, it's easy for me to be talking to you now about it, you know, mm -hmm. some, you know, five years later. But we had to go through these very strategic um, conversations and have an internal dialogue yeah. about what we were willing to risk and what we really felt the right thing to do was for, for we think, mm -hmm. an ultimate return on investment mm -hmm. to society right. and the business. And the business filling on, on both of those requirements. Uh, and in a world that is often, sadly, somewhat hostile towards immigration, how do you teach communities about the benefits of accepting uh, migrants and how do you deal with the critics? You know, five years ago, the, the concern, the risk around how that would be received. How did you then communicate that purpose and, and the return contribution that would be made? Well, there were lots of, obviously, tactical communication yeah. strategies, everything from making sure that we were communicating with our own employees about our position, because if, it, if our own employees don't feel it and breathe it and say it, it's not authentic. Yeah, sure. And so we started there. But um, I believe the next, you know, really what we decided to do was mount a campaign of education. So migration has always been and will only increase. And it's the way the world works. And I think in some ways, some people have forgotten that. Right. So we had to sort of bring that back into the uh, conversation. And then we started talking about what migrants actually do for economies. Right. So what do they do for small communities, medium communities, and large communities? What would happen if migrants don't take some of the jobs that some of us in this country don't mm -hmm usually want to take. Mm -hmm. And what do they bring, just in terms of the, all the richness mm -hmm. that migrants continue to bring by bringing tradition, culture, religion, and food, right. you know? Such just variety. the sharing, right. yeah. you know, the sharing of, of these backgrounds just makes the community stronger. And I think this was the way we started the conversation, is to start reminding people of this. Right. And being here in New York City, obviously that's apparent to all of us yeah. and those that live in uh, major metropolitan areas. But when it comes into sort of small town America yeah, and, different. and different parts of the world, indeed, to think about this from a global conversation. So how do you therefore overcome skepticism that might be immediate and education, communication, and obviously commitment that mm -hmm. the Western Union Foundation has and just mm -hmm. being uh, committed and persistent within that? You know, I think one of the things we had to do was be stern and be deliberate and be intentional. So once we decided that this was the stand we were taking and this was our responsibility mm. as a company, mm. we did not waver. And that's one thing I think that corporations have to, have to be ready not to do is waver. Mm. Um, when we decided we would be a voice for the migrants um, in many different countries, not just in the U.S., mm -hmm. because obviously migration patterns are happening in corridors all over the globe. By the way, there are 16,000 migration corridors, mm -hmm. and we operate and play in all of them. But I think what we had to really do is try to find some partners to do it with. And to be honest, we actually cast some invitations for other corporations to do it with us. Five years ago, no other corporation wanted to stand side right. by side with us. Now it's different, it's five years later. We did it first, 
people have seen that it, it was actually good for business good. and not so scary. Mm. And so now we're beginning to have some corporations wanting to collaborate with us. We decided since we in the beginning could not get some other corporate partners to stand with us mm. that we should go to developing organizations mm. and you know look at not just our NGO partners but look at you know IDB look at World Bank we're look at uh, partnerships with USAID and and that's where we started